Hi, I'm Don King. Hello, TAV. Puerto Rico. Viva Puerto Rico. Mr. King, boxing in Brooklyn, what are your thoughts? I think it's going to be great. We're boxing is back, but Tyson is taking a high and Now we're bringing the mini Tyson in uh, to do his job on uh, March the 9th when he takes on uh, uh, Bernard Hopkins. And Bernard Hopkins is trying to make history, being the oldest man in the world to win a title. And I mean, so... Uh, we have to put a stay on that for a moment, and that'll give him a chance to rest and recite and enjoy the affluence of his efforts that he is participating in so many boxing matches prior to this. And so that being said, history will be made when Tavares Cloud steps into the ring, beats Bernard Hopkins, and gains the fame and acclaim and affluence that he so richly deserves. I have a question to you. Um, with sure. regard to the popularity of MMA, of the MMA, the popularity of the MMA, what, do you, what are your thoughts on the state of boxing right now? The boxing is great. All we need is a hero. You know what I mean? The MNA and all the rest of them, they can go. The only two real sports in the world that has touches the, the fiber of every man is soccer and, uh, and boxing. They're universal. The rest of them, you know what I mean, they're uh, new sports that's coming in and you teach them to new people and whatever it could be. So, you know, Picasso was painting the boxes on the walls back in the cave, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so and then you just had to, you know, Christian throwing the lion, the Christian was throwing, a, you know, being thrown to the lions. And then they came up with the guys that were fighting, you know what I mean, the gladiators. So it's always going to be there. So your thing is, we are in search of, you know, as the heavyweights go, that's what boxing would go. And that's what they don't realize. You get great uh, great guys that are, are young, uh, lesser weight. But the heavyweights was moving, and the glory of that has been lost because the two heavyweight champions live in Europe, and they only fight in Europe. Mm. So they're European champions. They're not world champions. So you got to be able to deal with what is real and practical. And when you do that, we're going to have a program in search of and bring the heavyweight championship back to old glory, may she ever wave. Speaking of practical, what is it really going to take for the heavyweight division to come back to prominence? A good fighter, a good fighter who's tried, tested, and proven, dedicated, and committed to bringing old glory back again. This is for Puerto Rico, Mr. King. Who is going to be the next greatest Latino fighter, in your opinion? Well, I can't forget Tito Trinidad. Tito Trinidad. Tito! Oh. Viva Puerto Rico! But, but, but current, is there any current Latino fighters that you think could, could take the reins? We are, we're looking for that, too. You know what I mean? In fact, I'm going to get with Tito here. Just had a birthday, you know, a few go, uh, last week sometime, Thursday or something. And uh, I love you, Tito. You know what I mean? And so, Papa, you too. I got to go one more thing, and of course, I got to ask you about Camacho. Any words on him? Oh, yes. Camacho was my man. The macho man. You know what I mean? He was just such a glorious guy, and it was such a sad, disappointing, and hurting thing the way that he uh, left us, you know what I mean, in, uh, in some kind of a street thing and somebody shooting somebody going there. But the macho man was vibrant. He was really alive when he was there, and I just loved him. I thought he was just some wonderful, you know what I mean? So macho man, you know, may you rest in peace, and I love you and to the family. All my condolences, my heartfelt condolences, but I want to celebrate your life. I don't want to mourn it because you was a bad sucker, baby. Yeah, it kicked our macho Camacho. <laughs>